Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Welcome back to our Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Um, all by myself today, Bob took the day off for a little bit of a long weekend mini vacation down in Cape Cod. Um, so join me in, in wishing Bob a fantastic little long weekend. Um, not too much to talk about before we get into the news. Kind of the only thing that I want to mention is yesterday we put up our first long form ski review um, featuring Emily, who we've been working with kind of behind the scenes for, gosh, I don't know, oh, probably a year or so now. Um, she's somebody that we've been trying to get more into the mix in our content. Uh, fantastic skier. She's got um, really good knowledge of the industry and, and products involved. Great skiing background, free ride coach. Um, so that was her first long form review. I thought she did a great job. Sometimes it's a lot being under all these lights and stuff like that. Um, so kudos to Emily for a job well done. Uh, and yeah, look for her in more reviews going forward. Um, we had her on a number of different skis this past winter. So you'll see more trickling out throughout this spring and summer. Um, and then, yeah, fingers crossed that we can, we can get her on more skis this upcoming ski season. Um, so check that out if you haven't already. Um, and with that, I think we can get right into this week's news. Um, luckily with Bob out, you know, it is a little bit shorter of a news week, I'd say. Um, tends to happen this time of year in the spring. You know, ski industry news kind of quiets down a little bit. Uh, but first topic of the week, the current FIS president, Johan Elias, who has been in and out of Top 5 Friday's news quite a bit recently. Um, he is looking to restructure the World Cup broadcasting rights. So this is a little confusing. It did, admittedly, it took me a little while to kind of wrap my mind around the current situation, but I think I've got it nailed down pretty good. Um, currently what happens is every, every FIS national governing body holds the rights to their own domestic broadcast. Um, those rights are then sold back to, or the rights to international broadcasts are sold to a Swiss media company called Infront Sports Media, who then sells it to other companies in individual countries. So basically a way for national governing bodies to earn revenue from broadcasting rights is kind of the, the way that I see it. Um, but the downside to that is there's very little consistency in World Cup broadcasting, which maybe you're aware of, maybe you've experienced. You know, I'd say here in the United States, we don't, we don't get the, the, best, um, the best World Cup broadcasts. And, and I think that's probably true around the world, although I think the United States is probably a pretty good example. Um, Elijah has proposed compensation agreements with each member country in exchange for allowing the international FIS organization to fully control all the rights. So certainly would change things quite a bit. Um, I think the biggest benefit would be more control and more consistency in World Cup broadcasts. So pretty interesting. Um, it's also interesting in the sense that Johan will be up for re-election in about a month. Um, so yeah, we'll have to kind of keep an eye on this and, and see what comes out of it. Um, but I think it'd be cool if there was if more of a, a centralized controlling body for World Cup broadcasting. Um, and yeah, who knows, maybe we'd see a little bit of an uptick in, in overall quality and consistency. So that's it for the first topic of the week. Um, second topic of the week, I've seen this one pop up quite a bit on other social media sites, stuff like that. Um, Vail's plan for employee housing has hit a bit of a roadblock and in this situation or in this story in particular when we say Vail we actually mean the actual Vail resort not Vail resorts as an organization. So back on April 15th Vail shared some specific plans for new employee housing including a living space in East Vail for 165 employees of Vail, the actual ski area. Now, this week, Vail Town Council voted to condemn the property that Vail had been planning to use 
essentially giving them power to completely block this development. Um, the reason that they're citing is bighorn sheep habitat, um, but you know, just quoting what I've read on social media, or not quoting, but citing what I've read on social media and kind of the buzz right now uh, and, and, and the suggestion that I've seen from some people on social media is that the real reason is that Vail residents just didn't want a 165 employee living space in East Vail. So I think it's an interesting conversation here. Um, I expect that we'll hear more and more of this, but it kind of just unfortunately continues that difficult scenario where there's there's clearly just a struggle for housing in mountain towns. Um, we were having that conversation today, just internally, is, is Stowe is not exactly an easy place to live, um, especially for somebody who works in the ski industry and probably doesn't make enough money to afford a seven-figure home. Um, and I think you can take that same exact scenario and even amplify it when you're speaking to the town of Vail. Um, so fingers crossed that they'll be able to figure something out. Um, definitely a, a pinch point for just operating a resort in a town like this. You got to have places for your staff to, to live. Um, and yeah, to me, it's kind of a bummer. This seemed like at least a, a step in the right direction. 165 employees is a pretty small percentage of the total employees that Vail needs to operate their mountain, but at least it's, it's a start. Um, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on that one as well. Um, third topic of the week, this one's kind of fun. Uh, Forbes has, has reported on what's trending in skiing. So Forbes magazine published an article on the latest trends in the ski industry. Um, a lot of this stuff isn't surprising to us. Kind of the, the overarching theme here um, is that it's kind of fun just to see how major publications and kind of the, the world in general views our industry. You know, we, we, we within our own industry, um, you know, it, it, I think it's, you have a different perception, you know, a, a company like Forbes compared to like us, for example, or, or Ski Magazine or something like that. You know, you're, you're looking at it through a, a much different lens. Um, so some of these trends we have highlighted here on Top 5 Fridays. Uh, some examples of that would be the move towards more eco-friendly practices, um, the development of indoor ski areas, the overall rise in popularity for uphill skiing um, or alpine touring. And then there were a couple that couple of trends that haven't really trickled into our news as much. Uh, one of which is the increasing presence of different insurance programs. Um, definitely seems like something that's on the rise. More and more companies seem like they're kind of jockeying per, for position to create some sort of skiing insurance program, um, whether that's kind of injury insurance or, or other types of insurance. Um, kind of interesting to see Forbes highlight that. And then this is really one that we haven't spoken much about on Top 5 Fridays at all. And like, these are kind of things that I don't ever really think about as a skier um, is really techno technology focused products. Um, so they kind of cover two different things here. Uh, one being performance age, excuse me, performance aids, um, such as the Carve system. I would venture that if any of you have heard of performance aids for skiing, Carve is probably the one you've heard of because I see their ads. Um, they do pop up on my social media feeds every once in a while. I at least was familiar with them as a company. Um, but yeah, it's technology driven, basically ski instruction. You know, you're not skiing with an instructor, rather you strap some stuff to your body um, and, and it kind of tells you what you're doing wrong and what you should work on. It, it, to me, that's just a very interesting concept um, and then the other kind of technology focused product that they talked about was tracking software that shows your on mountain location um, and in general, you know, aims to improve your 
on mountain experience. Um, and yeah, I just thought that was interesting, you know, from, from my per perception as a 36 year old skier who's been doing it my whole life. I never really, I never really put much weight on those things. Um, I have thought that it would be fun to try the carve system just to see what it does, but certainly not something that I would go out and, and spend money on, I don't think. Um, and then the, the tracking software to me is interesting and maybe you guys have different thoughts about this. Maybe some of you use um, software like this. I, I don't know, when I'm out on the mountain, I, I generally like to stay off of technology as much as I can which maybe is ironic and maybe you guys are picking up on that from the sense that I actually spend a lot of time on snow with reasonably fancy cameras filming other people. Um, but I've always just loved being in the mountains and to me being in the mountains is, is its own adventure. Um, I'd rather have a printed map with me than, than, I don't know, than checking my location on my iPhone or something like that. But I also understand the benefit of it. Um, I certainly would use technology like that if I had to in an, in an emergency situation. Um, I suppose I'm just the type of skier who, who prefers kind of getting lost in the adventure rather than having an app tell me where I should go next. Uh, but no, I thought this was really interesting. I definitely encourage you to check it out. As I said, it's just, just cool to kind of see see our industry through the lens, through a different lens, um, for, through a different perception, so to speak. Um, so check that out. And then the fourth topic of the week, I'm going to really touch on this quickly, um, mostly because I don't really want to give anything away from it. I don't think I would do it justice if I did try and talk about it. Really, really encourage you all to follow the link. We always leave these links in the description to the video. Um, so follow the link and, and check this out. Um, read it start to finish. I, I'm getting chills right now uh, just just thinking about it. Um, but Michaela Schifrin published a story on the Players Tribune called I Want to Remember Everything. Uh, Michaela is pretty famously reserved, um, but really opens up in this piece and it, it's super, super powerful and I think gives you just a lot of insights into what she's gone through and, 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 and her headspace and, and just her experience. So yeah, I'm not really, I'm not going to say anything more about it. Um, but yeah, strongly, strongly encourage you. I feel like I always encourage people to check out the articles that we're referencing and citing, but this one in particular, um, take, take some time out of your day, uh, go sit down in a quiet place and, and read her story. Cause I think it's really powerful and will probably give you a, a new sense of respect for Michaela Schifrin. It, it, it certainly did for me. Um, and that's it for news topics of the week. Lastly, we have our edits of the week. The first is a 25 minute long documentary about skiing in Kashmir. Um, really interesting. You know, you don't, you don't hear about skiing too much from this region of the world. Um, they kind of specifically talked about how locals are starting to really benefit from it more or, or utilizing it more than they have in the past. Um, kind of always been a destination for Western people. Um, so yeah, super interesting and, and, and a little different than most things that we normally share on edits of the week. The second edit is certainly right in line with stuff that we normally share on edits of the week. It is the second of the super unknown recaps. Um, just again, you know, kind of a broken record here, but those guys are crazy. Just jaw dropping skiing. Third edit of the week, uh, Kimbo Sessions is back. If you're unfamiliar, this is Kim Boberg's invitational event. Um, we have the first recap from that event that's up. It's pretty short. It's like three minutes long. So it doesn't take long to watch that. And then fourth edit of the week is more from the mountain biking world. Um, it's a piece from Patagonia highlighting North Shore Betty um, and just a, a really good kind of really good story in general. Um, things like this always give me really positive vibes and make me want to go ride my bike, which I don't know, maybe maybe I'll go do that right now. It's a beautiful day here in Vermont. Maybe I'll go uh, go home and change into bike clothes and, and go out and do some riding like North Shore Betty. Um, so that's it for Top 5 Fridays. Uh, hope you guys all have a fantastic weekend, Bob. Hope you're having fun down in Cape Cod. Um, 
We'll have another review for you next week. I believe we're going to dive deep into the Mantra 102 next week. So take a look for that or keep your eyes out for that. Um, and we'll be back again with another Top 5 Fridays video on Friday. And pretty darn sure we'll have Bob back for that one. So we'll talk to you then. And yeah, hope you guys have a great weekend.